My question to you now is, what does Rory do next? Does he just go and join Live Golf? Because he has now stepped down again from the PGA Tour policy board. And we have the full story, exactly what he has said on this in an interview ahead of this week's tournament at Quail Hollow. Now, before we go into his exact statement, I've got a few things that I want to go through. If he's stepping down from the PGA Tour policy board for the second time, remember he stepped down in November last year due to the fact that he didn't agree with the PGA Tour's direction at that point. He's now rejoined very recently, or supposedly rejoined very recently, taking over the role from Webb Simpson. Now, the whole idea that was put to the media is that Rory was joining back towards the PGA Tour because of his change of stance in order to channel a better direction and get to a solution quicker. But my question for you is right here. If he's stepping down again, does this mean he doesn't agree with what the direction of the PGA Tour policy board is going in, number one? And then if that isn't an agreement, because we have to assume that Rory wants just unity within the game, so i.e. the PIF fund, PGA Tour, Live Golf, and DP World Tour coming to some sort of agreement, does that mean the PGA Tour now don't want that? Because we have heard rumours that Jordan Spieth, being one of them, said, now we don't need the money from the PIF fund because we have the investment from the Fenway Sports Group. Rory didn't agree with that. So this very fractious nature within the PGA Tour now, what does that mean for the direction of our goal? Because if we're being perfectly honest, yes, the PGA Tour don't need the money in terms of investment to make the tour better, but we do need the money in the sense of allowing an agreement to take place. Because an agreement's only going to take place if money exchanges hands. An agreement means we can see all the best players play more often together. And that's exactly what we want as golf fans. So let's go through Rory's statement, but they're the things that I wanted to get off my chest on that because if you think about this logically, if Rory now doesn't agree and they all can't agree, what does this mean for the direction of golf? I just think we've got to put bygones be bygones in my opinion. I'm not on the inside. I don't know exactly what's going on, but what is going on here just seems a little bit ridiculous. I feel sorry for Rory right now. I really, really do. So this is what Rory said. Now, Rory said this. McElroy tentatively accepted ahead of Thursday's opening round at the Welsh Fargo Championship at Quail Hollow, Northern Carolina. He told reporters that he will not now be rejoining the PGA Tour policy board after all. It's just a pretty complicated and pretty messy, McElroy said. With the way it happened, it opened up some wounds and scar tissue from things that have happened before. And I think that was very substant of people on the board who, have com who were uncomfortable with me coming back on for some reason. So he's suggesting that people on the board don't want him back. I think the best cause of action is if there is some people on there who aren't comfortable with me coming back. And I think Webb stays and sees out this term. He's got, a got to a place where he's comfortable with doing that. I just keep doing what I'm doing. I'm impatient because I think we've got, got this window of opportunity to get this done. Because both sides, from business perspective, I wouldn't say need to get it done, but it makes sense. And that's what exactly what I was saying. Rory's saying from a business perspective, nobody actually needs this money, but to unify the game of golf, a transaction has to take place. Now, he doesn't stop there. And I really do agree with what he's saying. Now, with all these stories, let me know what you think. I just think I feel sorry for him. Him having to step down for the second time, but from, I'm going to put it from this point of view, I'm sort of speculating here a little bit, from the point of view that he wants to unify the game and maybe the rest of the board don't agree with that or certain individuals don't agree with that. I sort of liken it to when Northern Ireland went through the peace process in the 90s, the Good Friday Agreement. Neither side was happy. Catholics weren't happy. Protestants weren't happy. But it brought peace and we just sort of learned to live whatever has been negotiated with, right? That was in 1988 or whatever, 20, 25, 30 years ahead. My generation doesn't know any different. It's just what it's always been like. And we never know anything but peace. That's sort of my little way of trying to think about and trying to make both sides see what there could be a compromise here. Yes, it's probable not going to, probably not going to feel great for either side, but it's just a place where the game has to go, has to go again to thrive and we all get back together. Then I think that's ultimately a really good thing. I think Rory right here is talking sense. Rory 18 months ago wouldn't have said this, but maybe I keep speculating here. 
part of the policy board is, are in that stance where we don't want to join with the PIF fund. I think it's absolutely crazy. We need to let bygones be bygones, and I'd love to know what people don't want Rory back and what has made his decision to leave, really, or what person, what people have made this decision for him to step down from the PGA Tour policy board. I know for one thing, it's definitely good for his golf, so hopefully next week at the, at the PGA Championship, he can get the W, which would be class to see. That's all we have time for today. Rory has stepped down from the PGA Tour policy board as individuals on the board don't want him there and sort of doing little things to make him feel uncomfortable. If you do want to keep up to date with all the breaking news, don't forget to subscribe and turn the bell.